told once in 15 years of radio, Barry Schmaltz and his crazy mother, Betty Schmaltz, and his father, Louis Schmaltz. The names have been changed to protect the, Schma the Schmaltzes. Let's see, how do I begin the story? He was about 15 years old. He was a tall kid. His bedroom, pink carpet, two-story house, nice house. He's having a fist fight with his father in the bedroom over something his mother said. It ends with him crying and enraged because he knew he could beat the heck out of his father after a few a few real good punches were thrown. I don't know if you've ever seen a father and son fight. It's, it's, it's actually heartbreaking to see. To me, it was a violation of a, a very deeply held um, taboo. Never to strike your father no matter what. Well, I don't know, but that family was crazy from top to bottom. They went at each other with straight rights and blasted each other. And it ended with the kid holding his punches, because I think he couldn't really knock his father on his butt. He picked up a piggy bank that, to me, was like uh, looked like a 25-pound piggy bank that he had had, a ceramic one, since I knew him for 10 years. And he was enraged and red-faced and tears running down his eyes. He looked at his father, and he smashed the piggy bank on the floor, and all the coins that he had collected since childhood was, was smashed. And then the father threw him out of the house, and he wound up living in my mother's ba in our basement for a little while. Now, I don't know this guy anymore, but let me tell you what happened that day. Here's what happened that day. His mother was a would-be, like, movie star. As many women were in the 50s, uh, they were always trying to be like either, not Marilyn Monroe, but there were some buxom movie, like Jane Mansfield, more like that type. Cadillac, uh, the platinum blonde hair, always showing off. The father was a worker, gray-faced. He'd come home gray-faced. From, from his job, uh, he owned a little wholesale milk business. So they were a little better off than us somehow. But she had the Cadillac, the Coupe de Ville, pink one. And uh, a whack job, nuts, out of her mind. Why? She was always trying to lose weight. She went to some doctor in New Jersey who put her on Benzedrine or some kind of amphetamines, which gave her a madness, a, a, a Benny high. And so she comes home, crazy out of her mind, and she takes a dog chain and she uh, a, uh, a chain now a dog chain and beats her wrist till it bleeds just before the father comes in at dark at dusk ashen faced from the day in the milk plant and she says louis 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 look what your rotten son did to me look what he did to my hands well louis the father naturally would be protective of his wife he runs upstairs and screams to the kid Barry, what did you do to your mother? And the kid says, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You liar, you. And that's when they fought. And that's when it happened. That's when the piggy brand. So from the crazy mother, Betty Schmaltz, who turned Louis against Barry. Now, you say drug usage is prevalent today. Let me tell you something. There's plenty of drug usage in those glorious Eisenhower days. But it was sub rosa drug usage. Half the women were either on Milltown or on Benzedrine for diet. Milltown was uh, as, as, as popularly prescribed then as uh, Prozac, let's say, is today. You know, a lot of kids came home from college and used a little Milltown with rosé wine, Meduse, rosé. They got a nice, uh, a nice buzzeroo during uh, during the afternoons when the mother wasn't home. So I'm telling you, that's the Schmaltz story. It's a sad story, and the kid wound up basically a bug all his life. He was never stable. Well, I haven't seen him in many years. Right? He was he was a good friend of mine, but he's a, not a reliable friend because of... See, when a kid can't rely upon his mother or his father, he winds up to be an unreliable person in life 99% of the time. He winds up to be someone you can't count on because he could never count on, on somebody else. Savage. Happy home for Christmas. You can plan on me. Uh, there's some things in there that I don't like, but that's the nature of legislation and, and compromise. And I think uh, the system worked. That uh, gives me s some optimism that next year on a narrow set of issues, we can get some more work done. I don't know if you know what he just said. I told you he's a psychopath. I told you that he shows all the signs of a psychopathic madman. Now, what do I mean by that? Do you think that a psychopath has to run down the street with a hatchet and hit someone? Do you think a psychopath has to buy a machine gun and shoot up a school? A psychopath can destroy a nation without firing a shot. Do you understand that? 
since he is unstoppable, since virtually everything this crazy man has wanted, he has gotten. And you only know the half of it, not even a half of what he's done. He's gotten everything he wanted, virtually every one of his punch list, everything on his punch list of the radical far left agenda has been imposed upon the American people. There's only a few things left. What do you fear this crazy man is going to do before he leaves office? And I want to go back to Mao Zedong for a minute, because I've called this uh, leader of ours, Obama. Obama, it fits nicely. It's kind of a nice ring to it. Obama. I used it a few years ago. There's a great biography called The Unknown Story Mao by Jung Chang. This woman was a Red Guard briefly at the age of 14. Now, many of you don't know what a Red Guard is. The thugs in Baltimore and the thugs in Ferguson, the thugs at Yale, who are screaming at white professors, driving them off campus under the guise of white privilege, they are the Red Guards of today. They are Obama's guards. They don't know that. Some of them do know it. The leadership, which is all white communists out of Chicago, they know who they are. They are the new Red Guards. But they're not wearing little blue suits with red, red stars, are they? These are the Red Guards. I call them Obama's Guards. This one, this author, Jung Chang, was a Red Guard, a real one, at the age of 14. And then she worked as a peasant, as a barefoot doctor. You may remember that phrase from the 1970s. Anyway, she eventually worked her way to uh, England. She obtained a Ph.D. in linguistics in 1982 the first person from the People's Republic of China to receive a doctorate from British University. She wrote a best-selling book called Wild Swan in 1991. And this is an older book. She knows the true story of Mao Zedong and his communist revolution. She spent 10 years researching this. And when you hear what Mao Zedong actually did, what he did to people, his fellow Chinese, and what it has to do with what Obama is trying to do to, I wouldn't say his people, because I don't know who his people are. It's hard to say who his people are since he has such utter contempt for the American people. What he's trying to do to the West, let's put it to you that way. Yes, I have a savage indictment of Barack Obama. Michael Savage gives you a savage indictment of the most dangerous man in American history, a man who gets away with virtually anything he wishes to get away with. You say, well, you know, things aren't that bad. The economy's pretty good. Gasoline is cheap. I can go away this vacation. The snow fell up in the mountains. How bad can things be? Well, I don't know. How bad can things be? What do you fear Obama's going to do before he leaves office? I've been warning you for a long time now. Virtually everything I've warned you would happen has happened, and what I haven't warned you will happen, will eventually happen. And I've been telling you that I studied the Communist Cultural Revolution for a long time. During that period, the Red Guards roamed China and destroyed any symbol of a decadent bourgeois culture, including the food dogs that I collect. Because Mao Zedong believed that these food dogs were, in Obama's terms, symbols of unfairness. And so people, Chinese people, ordinary Chinese people who hid from these maniacs, tried to remove and hide these treasures of China's vast cultural heritage. Some even removed ceramic roof tiles on which these lion dogs were mounted to save them from Mao Zedong's rapacious young thugs of political correctness. But Mao named the thugs Red Guards. Does that sound familiar to you? Today, our rogue president's Red Guards are rapidly destroying every vestige of America's cultural heritage. From the schools to universities, young brains are being washed of history and logic. Science is being replaced by rote repetition of big lies. Children are being taught that a better, more fair world is being created when, in fact, it is a totalitarian monstrosity. The world of Obama is a world of conformist beliefs, not critical thought. It's a world where centralized authority replaces individualism, where conformity and nihilism trump creativity and faith. It is a world where the Red Guards of America... Once independent media and academic establishments now seek out, remove, and attempt to destroy any symbol of American distinction and greatness. Obama is really great at leading America in the wrong direction. This is a rogue president. And so these are from pages 26 and 27 of Government Zero, which is a very, very important book. And I keep repeating it until you finally understand that I'm not just selling you a book, I'm selling you an idea. 
an idea that unless enough Americans understand the model that this maniac in the White House is using, the worst is yet to come. The maniac just got a budget that is incomprehensible because there is no Republican Party. It's one and the same. I've told you it's Democrats. I've told you it's Republicans. I've told you this for 21 years. Fine. For a while, we were winning. In fact, I would take some credit for having caused some of the upheavals in the last two federal elections. But what good does it do if you don't have a party to represent you? They don't have the will nor the means, so what's the difference? They're all frauds anyway, by and large. The only good ones you never hear from. They were put in the back of the bus right from the beginning by John Boehner and the others. Now, that's why I want to talk about Mao Zedong. Many of you don't know who he was. In fact, there's a revival going on in China right now for this madman. That's hard to believe that the Chinese are that stupid. I thought they were an intelligent people. I thought that once they rid themselves of this hardcore communism, they would never want to go back there, but apparently they're chasing the same dream all over again. This maniac, Mao Zedong, caused the deaths of 38 million people during the greatest famine in history because he imposed his views of agriculture on the Chinese. In well, uh, in all, well over 70 million Chinese died under Mao's rule, rule, and that's during peacetime. But what does it have to do with Obama? Well, you have to look at the man's psychology to see the comparison or the parallel. And that would be a ruthless portrait of Mao Zedong's accumulation of power through the exercise of terror. Now, we don't have an exercise of physical terror in this country quite yet, other than the burning of Baltimore, the killing of police in Ferguson and other cities by his Red Guards. We have, as people, not yet seen his reign of terror. You have to enter the shadowy chambers of Mao Zedong's mind to see where he went. You have to see how evil he was towards women, towards his wives and children. You have to look at what he did to his, his cohorts, meaning men who fought with him how he tortured them to death in order to, re to gain, gain uh, power over them. And I can read some of this to you, how he twisted the world, even against other communists, to show how he was really their leader. What he did to them is beyond comprehension, something you could never understand. Unless you understand history itself, you could never understand what he did. Burying enemies alive. For example, Mao Zedong's main party rivals were men we never heard of. Chang, Kuo Tao, you never heard of them men back in the 1930s. And so what Mao Zedong did was he sabotaged any competitor, even on the communist side, and then he sent the remainder of their men. He had a very large army, this competitor. Mao sabotaged him during the long march, and then he sent half the remainder of the other men to its doom in the northwest desert, burying the survivors alive. Did you know that Mao Zedong welcomed the Japanese invasion of China? as a way to destroy Shanghai Check. I'm trying to give you a thumbnail sketch of, of what happens when a person is insane and attains power. An insane genius like Hitler, an insane genius like Stalin, an insane genius like Mao Zedong. These are very important models for you to understand in order to understand the insane genius that's running the United States of America off the rails. Now, many of you are, are limited in your thinking, so when I talk about Obama and Mao Zedong, you think I'm making a direct comparison. It's because your minds are limited. I'm trying to show you a bigger picture. Of course, he's not exactly like Mao Zedong. These are different times. We are a different people, different situation. But he has the same mentality as Mao Zedong. But if you look at the overall picture of Mao Zedong, and you look at the overall picture of Barack Obama, who is still a very young man, and then you understand that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, and that this maniac has absolute power. Not quite. He almost has absolute power. You have to ask yourself, what would this lunatic do, given his hatred for the American people and America itself? What might he do if he gains any more power, since there's no opposition to this man? It's unlimited in what he might do. That's what I'm trying to warn you. So how do I tie this all together? I started by talking about Obama, the madman, Mao Zedong, the madman, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. I showed you in black and white what the liberal agenda is doing to our arts in this country, and I'm trying to tie it together for you, and I'm, then I'm asking you a simple question, which is what do you fear Obama's going to do before he leaves office, if he leaves office? Since the man is unstoppable, 
why should he why should he 